people going through a tough time may soon start bypassing the chemist shop in favour of the bookstore or library. Bibliotherapy is already quite the thing in English-speaking countries and over the past few months has started to make a name for itself in France. Emily de Vienne is a coach and author and she now specialises in bibliotherapy. I developed a biblio coaching method that basically consists of using books to help people overcome a problem, solve particular issues, see how others have got through difficult periods, how they felt less alone in times of worry. We can also use books for self-discovery, for personal development. After a private consultation, Emily will write up a personalised prescription, specific to the individual's reading tastes and habits. I'll spend time talking to my client and then make recommendations as to what I think they should be reading. I could suggest novels, essays, poems, practical books. I'll recommend specific pieces and then they'll make their own selection. Once they've read them, we meet again and we discuss what they read and what they enjoyed. I don't impose anything and keep it varied. Bibliotherapy means finding the right book at the right time. For career development, for example, Emily quotes from the book Complètement Cramé by Gilles Le Gardinier. Dreams help you move forward, they grow with you, they lift you, but you must rid yourself of illusion as soon as possible. Delusion stops you seeing the world as it really is and inevitably leads to failure. This sentence backs me up when I ask someone how their project's getting on, for example. Are they remaining realistic but also holding on to their dreams? Even though Emily's consultations may touch on some psychological aspects, she does not see herself as a replacement therapist. Her role as a coach, however, means she helps her clients face up to and accept their issues. People feel less guilty. They realize they're not the only ones to be dealing with such and such a problem because an expert has spent time considering the issue and has found a book where a man or woman is going through the same thing and has shared their experiences. This is exactly how American author Douglas Kennedy felt. He attended Paris's 34th annual book fair, Le Salon du Livre de Paris, which was held between the 21st and 24th of March, and participated in one of this year's major themes, The Book That Changed My Life. He spoke of Richard Yates's Revolutionary Road, saying it inspired him to become a writer. Reading Richard Yates' book was like looking in a mirror. He exposes a certain truth within American society and failed marriages in particular. His incredibly realistic descriptions of failed marriages, described with such lucidity, such clarity and such brutality, but a very human brutality, had a very profound impact on me because I grew up within a failed marriage. And this is how I became an author. Businessman Mathieu Pégas also has a book that changed his life, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. The book has several messages, the ability in each of us to become a hero. This is what happens with Edmond Dantes, the 19-year-old sailor who becomes the Count of Monte Cristo, our capacity to take charge of our life. I have always been moved by this quest for meaning. And the third thing that affected me with this novel is a rejection of conventions. Values he adheres to today and promotes in his new book, which calls for political audacity in these times of economic downturn. We need to bring back optimism and will to this accepting world and say that it is possible to change things. I think this is absolutely essential. Positive literature, comforting books, what's known as feel-good books. Very popular in the United States, they're now available and growing in popularity in France. Karine Bailly de Robien created her 100% female author's publishing house in 2013 and the stories always have a happy ending. The main character is always a woman, and as the book progresses, she has to overcome hurdles, problems along the way, and she learns from this and grows throughout the story. The reader identifies with this character, and when she finishes the book, she feels better. We know that women are now turning to feel-good literature to help enhance their life, often when they've had their first child or when they're trying to balance work and family life. 
Women aged 30 to 35 and upwards who use reading as a sort of comfort blanket to help them in their day-to-day lives. Une lecture qui les aide en fait à, à mieux vivre leur quotidien. Most of Karine's authors are American and German, but we're starting to see some French too. We held our first literary competition. We asked people to submit manuscripts and use the feel-good factor as inspiration. We received over 100 manuscripts and the winner was Benedicte Giorgio with Une héroïne américaine, an American heroine. A romantic novel and our first French feel-good book. We often joke that it should be included in health cover. With these feel-good books, we go back to reading for pleasure, helping us look on the bright side of life. <laughs>